You've got to allow your imagination to take you away in a direction that has moved in new positive attitude. Where are you with a new positive attitude? Can you see where you are? Okay. I know you want to sleep. Have a day. What about yourself? Um, go back to my old school and be a normal kid. What a nice thing to say. Go back to your old school and be a normal kid. All right, and that's really, really hard thing to say. So what do you class yourself as at the moment? Once a week, these children sit down to explore their feelings, perceptions and personal experiences. Social and emotional aspects of learning, or SEAL, has proved it can work in primary schools. But can it work in secondary schools? Two very different schools in Wiltshire might give us an idea. Both are high-performing specialist schools, but while one has a fairly typical intake, the other serves children with severe emotional and behavioural difficulties. These two schools have both been teaching principles of emotional intelligence. What have the children got out of it? The Corsham School, a specialist arts college, puts strong emphasis on creativity, imagination and empathy. In 2002, they began trialling an emotional intelligence programme in tutor time. Sean and Will are in Year 7. They will learn about empathy, feelings and relationships in 20-minute sessions once a week for the next five years. It's where we like, discuss what we feel about other people and what we feel about bullying and things that happen to other people around us. Like friendships and stuff. It's a way of developing students' emotional intelligence, their ability to explore their own feelings about things, but also to be able to understand other people's feelings and be able to then learn how to respond appropriately. Last week we started to make these poses about bullying and how it feels and everything. We had to get into groups of three or four and two or three of us were bullying and the other one had to um, show how they'd react in that position and then we had to talk about how we felt being a bully and being bullied. Uh, OK, R7. Come on in, please. Quietly. Science teacher Emma Davis bases the session on an emotional intelligence modular programme. I need your attention, I need you all looking <laughs> forwards. First of all, let's just think about what we were doing last week. Today, building on the previous week, she asks the children about their opinions and feelings on aspects of bullying. So far, we've talked about it from the point of view of somebody else, and we were talking about how they might feel. But what we're going to do today is we're going to look at where you stand, what your feelings are, and how you feel about this issue. We've put a line across the middle of the floor. At that end of the room, you've got strongly agree. At this end of the room, you've got strongly dis disagree. And just to make life easy, smack in the middle, you've got neither agree nor disagree. Emma will read a series of statements aloud. The children must stand on the line, first at a position which reflects how they feel, and then how they'd actually behave. What happens if you, like, don't know? You're going to have to commit, I'm afraid. OK? Obviously, there are going to be some statements on here where you aren't really sure. But you're going to have to make a decision. That's where it gets difficult, because you may be asked to give a reason for your decision to stand where you are. OK, if my friend bullies someone, I join in, because I don't want my friend to dislike me. Your response to that sentence, in terms of how you feel about it. Could somebody down in the strongly disagree position Volunteer to tell me why you're standing there. Kyle. Um, well, if my friend did that, I don't think he would be my friend. I, I don't really, I, I wouldn't, if, I wouldn't really care what he thought because it's my view of what he should be doing. I wouldn't do what he's doing. Excellent. Okay, so you're going to stand independently from your friend, but there are other people up here who feel differently. I join in for like a day, as it were. And then after that day, I try and persuade my friend to say, look, we've done enough on him now or something like that. Oh. Some weeks it can be like, really boring, you just can't wait for the lesson to be over. And some weeks it can be like really fun, like today we've, I've had a lot of fun doing this. I look forward to it so then I can like, understand 
um, how to sort bullies out and to stop bullies bullying other people. But how does this go deeper than PSHE? Students currently in Year 12 believe it achieved several things. At the time, I sort of thought, oh, this is so rubbish and it's really childish. But like looking back on it, I feel yeah. that it did actually help. Because yeah. then when we left in Year 11, we were such a close year. Our whole year was really like close together. I think it was quite helpful for the boys especially because yeah. boys don't tend to talk about their feelings as much and when they have to sit there and talk about them I think that it stopped them bottling it up whereas girls would talk to their friends anyway but maybe talking to someone else would give them another perspective on a problem. It does help people express their opinions but in a way other than violence and bullying. Because, so if, some, some, if a bully stops bullying because of it, it's good and they start talking to each other about their opinions say, well, I think you're wrong, so just punching them. If you feel strongly about something, you should be behaving like that, surely. Every time you moved away from how you really, genuinely, truly felt to a different position on that line, you're not really being true to yourself. And other things are getting in the way from how you really, genuinely feel about that situation. And so that's something which we're going to be exploring, why it is that we might not always behave in a way that truly matches how we feel inside. The fact that students are so much better at talking about how they're feeling about things does open up the dialogue between teacher and student. So it, it creates a much better relationship for everybody. So I, my relationship with students can improve, their relationship with each other can improve. And we are able to talk on a much deeper level. But how would lessons in emotional intelligence sit with children with more pressing problems? Just down the road from Caution, Springfield is a residential special school for pupils with severe emotional and behavioural difficulties. All of its young people have been unable to cope in a mainstream setting, and most have been excluded from at least two other schools. Luke, Tom and Craig take emotional intelligence, or EI, once a week for 40 minutes after regular school hours. Since we've been doing it, I mean, the school's got much more relaxed, there's no like, fighting every day, yeah. less bickering. I mean, people have their moments, but I mean, you get so involved with other people's lives and you're in emotional intelligence, like chatting about what's gone on at home, like if you get involved with police, if you're naughty at home or stuff like that. And then you, you, talk, you talk at NEI and then it gets like, all resolved there. So you tend not to argue with people when you do EI. So a, lot, a lot of the kids here are um, emotionally challenged. I, I was when I came here, and I've been always throughout my life been very, very neglectful of my emotions, and ignored them completely. Well, since I've been here, I've been able to talk about them very openly, get to grips with like recognizing me in other people. And so the other advantage of EI is that for the kids who have greater difficulty in that, we're able to help them, help our peers. It's a progression, not only with the adults but with the students as well, because we get to help each other. Ever since I've been here and been doing it, my mum's actually, my mum even says that she's seen a, a lot, quite a, a lot of difference in me, in behaviour-wise, and I can see that too. I used to, I couldn't really hold me, hold myself together for like two minutes. I used, couldn't sit down for two minutes, but now I could just sit down and talk to anyone or do anything. And why do you think that is? I don't know. I think it's because I've never been told or being able to control it, so I would, haven't really been, haven't known what to do. So I just took it out on people and run around madly. John Rogers is on the pastoral care team. He teaches EI to the year nines. A positive attitude brings successful experiences. A negative attitude can be a problem for all of us because it stops us moving in a helpful direction. So what I would do is use, obviously, information from the book okay. and try and use examples of what I've done myself to ensure that, basically, they understand that everybody has emotional issues. It's not just about them. OK, but when we visualise, right, we need to be completely relaxed. And this, this can be difficult. So it's a, a real big concentration. You need both your arms on the, on the table. OK, and what you're going to do, OK, is you're just going to rest your head Right on your hands. Today, John takes the children through an exercise to help change negative perceptions of themselves. That's really good, kids. That is so hard to do. 
in a short period of time. Well done. Now what I want you to do now is remember the event that you wrote on your flowchart and remember the negative attitude you took from that event. So if you were scared, frightened, frustrated, just think about that now. Allow your imagination now to take this negative attitude three months into the future. See in your mind new positive attitude. If we choose a positive attitude, we as a group will be happier. Okay. But what I would like to do now all right, is just discuss all right, how you felt all right, while you were doing visualisation. Have a day. Um, go back to my old school and be a normal kid. What a nice thing to say. Go back to your old school and be a normal kid. All right, and that's really, really hard thing to say. So, what do you class yourself as at the moment, Tommy? Um, Please. And um, like sort of handicapped kid, you have to stay like in this school for like two years. And you don't want to be here. You'd like to be what you class as normal people. Well, I'd class most of you better behaved than most of the children that I know. But because he's been honest here, has an emotional issue. That's why I believe that you're probably at the school. What you have to be careful of is you are doing emotional intelligence for 45 minutes, that you don't go into a counselling session, and you also leave that particular individual quite distraught to go off to an evening meal, and that has actually happened to me. Well, we talked about feelings and attitude and about how to, how to think about it. In the positive, I went back to my old school and be like a normal kid, see myself like doing sports and everything without being bullied because of my language. It makes you like control things. If you've had like a problem, most staff will just ignore you. Whereas Mr Rogers will come over and he actually listen to you. He's been a big influence on my life, he's turned it around basically. And I, I wrote him a letter and telling him all the things about it and I've like got pictures and everything, give him the card. And he, he said he well, he almost cried when I gave it to him last night, and I was almost crying because like, I, I really get on with him well. If we go back about two years ago um, in Springfield, fixed term exclusions were still a problem. Um, children walking out of class was an ongoing problem. So if you can break those down and actually say, well, who are those youngsters that are going to end up in crime? It's those who get fixed term exclusions. It's those who can't cope in class and those who either come to school on a part-time basis or, or don't attend at all. At the moment, our attendance is as good, if not better, than any other primary or secondary school in Wiltshire. We've had no permanent exclusions, and the average amount of pupils out of class in the whole week in a school with pupils with severe and behaviour problems is two. That really says something, that something is right in Springfield at this present moment, and the EI programme is certainly a part of that. It helps you know how to deal with people, which you can't learn from just maths and English. You have it's to about socialisation, isn't it? It's about yeah. being being with other people, being put together with other people, and learning how to get along with people that you might not like that much. I think.